Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Band Journals. Welcome back to my channel. I am doing a Junction With Me session, working in my daily journal. This is my Hobonichi Techo, and I have completely stalled with this journal. <laughs> if you're wondering why you haven't seen a Journal With Me video for a while, this is why. I was really good for the first part of the year, the whole first half from January to June. I filled up that whole journal and then I started out strong in July. I was getting really into the visual journaling side of things, decorating the pages and then yeah, everything just went a bit blank. <laughs> but the reason for that is I started a prayer journal in August and that journal is something that I write in every night well, most nights, if I have a really, really late night and get home at 12 o'clock at night, for example, then I might just go straight to bed. But other than that, I journal in that every night and I have taken to just writing the way I used to write with just a lined notebook where I would write about my day. I would write what happened that day. I would write about any thoughts that I have, any worries that I have, um, any prayers that I have. Uh, it would all just go into that lined notebook that I write in at night before I go to bed. So I found that I didn't need to write much in this journal. So yeah, I have kind of stalled with this, but because I've started it, I kind of want to, you know, fill it up still. So we'll we'll keep going. And how I'm using it now is just basically to continue sticking in my photos from the year. So I've been pretty diligent about that. I take my photos, I transfer them to my computer, I get the best ones in a Word document, format it, and then print them all. And then I place them all in my daily journal. So I've got my year captured through photos. So that's been pretty cool. Um, so I've just got a whole bunch of different photos from <laughs> weeks, perhaps months, on my desk and I'm just going to spend some time sticking them in my journal, annotating the pages. Um, some days if I remember if there was an event I remember what happened and I can write down the details. Most of the days I've completely forgotten what I did so I just use it now more like a photo book. Um, so but starting here we had our dance concert on the 12th of November and we all had to have our hair in a braid into a ponytail and there were a whole bunch of mums who got there early on the day to do everyone's hair and I love braids so one of the mums was an actual hairdresser so she did my hair which was pretty fun because uh, I don't usually do hair or makeup unless it's for a special event or something so took some photos of the hair um, Concert went well. Uh, my little juniors and inters, their dances went well. The seniors did the Swan Lake dance that c came together in the end. And then I was in a point dance. So that is a dream come true. One of my ballet dreams uh, to get onto point shoes. And then finally, we, we did our very first point performance. So that was a very big milestone. Uh, and then I was also in an adult dance class where we do sort of like a jazz Mm, hip hoppy, yeah, more jazzy style. And my point dance was directly before the adult dance, so I had to quickly change and I was out of breath and had no time to go over the second dance. And I did make one little mistake and was a bit behind my timing in the middle part because um, my head was just blank after doing the point dance. <laughs> but glad everything went well. Um, and these flowers, I took some close-up flower shots of a, of a um, I guess, bouquet of flowers. Um, our dance teacher, she gave flowers to her fellow teachers. So I did ballet teaching this year for the first time, which is another dream come true. Um, and then one of my ballet students, she um, surprised us with... Uh, some more flowers for for us and um, she got a card that she got the all my ballet students to sign and uh, so it was a lovely thank you card and yeah just taking a photo of the flowers from that I ended up pressing them 
they're currently being pressed right now <laughs> and it's taking forever to figure out which way this <laughs> shot goes and I still don't know if it's the right way up but anyway um so I've pressed a whole bunch of baby's breath and I pressed a whole bunch of rose petals so not sure how long it takes for them to dry out but um that's exciting and that can always be a memory from my ballet my year of ballet teaching and dancing and all that kind of thing and then so that's all done which is wonderful um I'm actually in one other dance for the year uh a Christmas dance uh, for the community Christmas carols that we have every year uh so that is very fun it's a very different style <laughs> more of the kind of hip-hop style so feeling very very much out of my comfort zone but fun to yeah try something different um try some different moves <laughs> uh, so every day this week I'm just going over and over that dance uh trying to get it into my head and yes hopefully that one will go well I had this horrible dream after the concert um where one of the girls fell over completely flat on her face and me my point shoe one of my point shoes came clear off my foot the whole thing just off my foot and it was a complete disaster. I woke up and I was a bit confused. I'm like, oh my gosh, did that happen? Is that going to happen? And then I realized, hang on, the concert's finished and everything went fine. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, it's funny how dreams, yeah. I Usually I have that kind of dream before the event happens when I'm really worried about it or just thinking about it. Um, so the fact that it happened afterwards, I was very disorientated when I woke up. I'm like, oh my gosh, panicking, this is not good, not good. And then the the relief, I, I often have dreams where I wake up and it's just pure relief that something didn't happen or that something isn't going to happen. And it's just like, yes, okay, everything's fine. The world is okay. <laughs> anyway, so that is some um, dance memories or moments that I have journaled about. On this day, the notable event was that I had a two-hour conversation with a friend on the phone, which was wonderful, just catching up on each other's lives, and we love going deep, just talking about God. I call, We call them like God chats, um, and so having a two-hour God chat, and it reminded me of a book I read called Packing Light by Alison Fallon, and this current thought that I'm kind of, I don't know, an insight that is being brought to my mind and that God's speaking to me about at the moment, how often Christians, I spoke about this in the faith message on Sunday, how, yeah, Christians can so often be looking for the right path and being obedient to God's call of our lives. And we can get so hung up on that when at the end of the day, sometimes it's just about living <laughs> and that there's no right or wrong path that there's just lots of paths and no matter, no matter which path you choose, as long as you're loving God, loving others and loving yourself, you know, have that as your foundation. Um, as long as you're doing that, then it doesn't matter what path you take. Take 10 paths if you want. Try 10, try another 10. It doesn't matter because God's with you and he'll grow you no matter which path you choose. And yes, life might look very different depending on which path you choose, but they're all you know, multiple right paths you could take. Um, so there's no need to be paralyzed and there's no need to be stressed over what's the right decision to make, what's the right path to take. As long as you, you, you know, doing your best as a human being and loving God, loving others, help doing your best to bring heaven to earth, then whatever path you take, you're, it's going to be fine. It's all going to be fine. And, and the idea that every path you take is going to be hard. So it's not necessarily about looking for the right path or the best path or, you know, any of that. It's just about living, choosing something, because no matter what we choose, there's going to be pain along the way. There's going to be some level of struggle and suffering along the way. We're going to lose things. We're going to go through some challenges and it's every path we choose that's going to happen. So just choose <laughs> and uh, yeah I kind, of, I kind of like that idea um something to explore at the moment um so moving on to this page 
Um, I had a kids' church day where I ran newspaper games. This is something that I've run a few times. Really, really fun. I didn't come up with the idea myself. In high school, when I was on a peer support camp, um, we did a newspaper games night where the teachers ran it, and we had an absolute blast. It was so fun, and ever since then, I've run it in different events, youth, kids, um, and it's always a hit. <laughs> You have teams and you got to look for words. Like, first person to find me the word the, and they've got to rip it out of the newspaper and bring it to you. First person to find five pictures of cars. First person to find all the letters of your name, for example. And then they have to make themselves a superhero outfit, and then we do a cart a cartwheel? No, we do a catwalk <laughs> while, while they're dressed in their superhero outfit. And there's prizes for everything. Um, and then... My favourite one, though, is where everyone lies flat on the floor, as still as you can be, while you get covered in newspapers, so that when you look at it, it just looks like a floor of newspaper. And then you film it, and then on the count of three, everyone jumps up out of the newspaper. And it's hilarious we, that we did it too, and we watched the video back. And it really does just look like newspaper, and it's only when everyone jumps up out of the newspaper that you're like, oh my gosh, there are people under there. It's so fun, so good, I love it. Anyway, <laughs> um, so if you have lots of newspapers, uh, that is a really fun way to uh, play games and just have even adults. Adults, it's so fun. Play it, play, do newspaper games with adults. It is wonderful. <laughs> and you can do different things. Like sometimes we did um, dress up as favorite movie character and there'd be Tinkerbell and Mickey Mouse and the Statue of Liberty or just dress up as some iconic figure um other times it's come up with your favorite um school your ideal dream school uniform uh another one is just yeah any fancy outfit or if you're an alien what's your space outfit um i remember went to a bridal shower one time and we dressed up as brides so you know the veil and the big puffy skirt uh, so you can definitely adapt to newspaper games, not just for kids. <laughs> if I had an adult uh, newspaper games where I was participating, I would love it. <laughs> so, so fun. Anyway, so moving on, of course, there's going to be cat photos. Uh, living in a house with three cats, there's going to be cat photos. And one day I was just looking out of my bedroom door and I saw that scene of the three cats all in a row. They looked like stepping stones or stepping cats <laughs> leading from my door to the, the other doorway. I thought that was so cute. Uh, so I took some photos of them and took a photo of Keanu in his, well not his, in the communal scratching tree. He's got his own scratching tree in my room. In the lounge room there is a communal scratching tree <laughs> for the three cats and he went in the box. He doesn't usually go in the box. He usually sits on the top bed, uh, but he was just sitting in this box. I should go back. Um, you would have seen me stick in some photos of some sunset sunset photos. Uh, so after the concert, I was just exhausted. You know, we got there at 9 a.m. Concert didn't finish until about 3 or 4 p.m. And I was just so wired. Yes, I could have slept because I was so tired, but for me, whenever I come home from something, it takes me so long to just unwind, because I'm so wired, and so we just watched some TV together, our choice of show at the moment is The Blacklist, and then we got takeaway for dinner, and I was just like, oh, thank you, that sounds amazing, just to relax and celebrate the end of the concert with some takeaway, so we went to The Cove, which is like one of the fanciest places that we have here in this little town of Bowen. And at the cove, there's a view of the ocean and sunset. Um, so we took some photos of that. And it's just always a spectacular place to go, really. Um, living in this beach town, the views are just amazing everywhere you go. <laughs> there's just water everywhere. And it is beautiful. Um, so that was just a nice thing to do after the big concert was finally over. And it's funny, the cats have, going back to the cats now, <laughs> they all have some nicknames. The family here, they they just naturally call them these nicknames. So these aren't the nicknames I give them. These are the nicknames the family I live with give them. So they call Keanu Mr. or Sir. They call Lila Bean and Cracky, because she, she acts very cracky sometimes. And the little one, Luna, they call Squish, because uh, she lies flat. Like, she's the only one who lies with her legs straight out the back. 
um, and fatty because she's getting a little bit of a tum tum <laughs> and she has no neck so they call her fatty <laughs> Uh, and now I'm just going in and if I remember any details I'm journaling about those so in November I started the reflections journal course for the second time so that's been fun I just filmed a couple more videos for that course today um, and oh got two more photos actually here of Keanu uh, this is one of the last times that he slept on my bed in the morning and we had some snuggles in the morning where he crawls up near me and he was in a very tired mood this morning some mornings as soon as he knows i'm awake he's up he's ready to go about his day other mornings he's sleepy and he'll um yeah stay asleep until i actually physically get up <laughs> um so this day he was all stretched out and so cute animals when they're asleep are just the cutest thing they make me feel so peaceful and um, he did that thing where he made these cute little noises as he rolled over and curled up his paws. And I took this photo of his paws all curled up. And they're just adorable, I think, out of aside from like the super cute photos when he was a little kitten. This photo of his paws curled up, I don't think it's just the cutest one I've ever taken of him. <laughs> and all because of those paws. Look at them. They're so adorable. He's so cat-like. I love it. Um... And I showed my my mum and she's just like, look at those paws. And I'm like, yes, it's all about the paws. And she said, oh, he's so shiny. <laughs> um, so yes, and that is my beautiful little kitty cat, my black cat, Keanu. So yeah, just added some journaling about that. And then over on the left-hand side page, we're caught up. Uh, it was the 22nd. Well, I think it was the 23rd actually that I filmed this video so I could remember what I did on the 22nd and just writing down a list of what I did. I filmed some videos, did some voiceovers, uploaded videos. That's usually the first thing I do when I get up in the morning because of the lighting. I have to film in the morning with the natural light coming through my window. So that's yeah, the first thing I do. Uh, and then I usually stop at about lunchtime and that's when I read while I have some lunch. At the moment I'm reading a book called Anxious People um, by the author who wrote A Man Called Ove, which I will share soon on my channel for a booktube video. It's one of my favourite books. Oh my gosh, love it. Um, I finished another book. I started, what's this? I started reading, my, okay, so I'm trying to read through my journals uh, and um, <laughs> I was reading my journal that I wrote when I was 21 years old and oh my goodness my 21 year old self was very very annoying <laughs> she was very she thought she knew a lot and <laughs> she knew nothing <laughs> I wrote all these really weird things about my beliefs about the world and life and I read them now I'm just like my gosh you had a very warped view of the world Anyway, <laughs> um, my 21-year-old self wasn't very wise uh, and it just, it's very humbling. <laughs> Good to know that, you know, the way we used to think is not the way we still think and the way I think now is not going to be the same way I think in 10 years and that, yeah, we just don't know a lot. <laughs> we think we do, but we just don't. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just recording that I made a journal, I sewed on some, I sewed some other projects and worked on some other journals, listened to some podcasts and wrote a list of the podcasts I listened to, Psychology of Seattle, and of course, Stuff You Should Know, You Are Not So Smart, which is my most recent podcast that I'm listening to, Room in the Trees, and just inspired by Susie LaFond and Visual Memoirs and Sabrina Ward Harrison. And yeah, that's about all I do for this. Thank you so much to my beautiful patrons who supported me in October and allowed me to create and share videos for another month. If you'd like to become a patron in November and support what I do here, that would be so, so appreciated. I'll leave the link below to my Patreon in the description box below where you get access to extra videos, first preference for my journals, uh, behind the scenes updates, and if you're a Ruby tier or high, you get every single digital kit from my Etsy plus an extra one every month. And there are also some mail tiers. You get something sent to you in the mail.